Hello everyone. Today uh, we shall study about the two topic that is uh, grouting materials and types of grouting. So let us uh, define what is grouting. Grouting is a process of ground improvement attained by injecting fluid like materials into subsurface soil or rock. What are the objectives of grouting? For what purpose we have to do the grouting? The first one is densification of prevent settlement and mitigate liquefaction. Soil solidification to increase cohesion of granular soil. Reduction of permeability and water control. Stabilization and reduction of expansion of clay soils. Compensation for lost ground and filling large pockets. Additional support for existing structure. That means grouting also works as underpinning. <clears throat> so types of grouting materials. So th three types of grouting materials are there. One is called as suspension grouts. Next is the solution grounds and third is the immersion grounds. So let us see what are the grouting materials which comes under the suspension grounds. Suspension grounds are also referred to as particulate grounds. See, the name itself says the type of grouting materials, suspension the grouting materials which remains in suspension in water in the form of a particulates in the form of a fine particles that is called as suspension grouts you can see here particulate grouts such as cement lime or combination of cement and lime if you are going to dissolve in water it will be in suspension form that means the, you can see the visible particles, particles also will be visible in the suspension. So what it says that it has been used in slurry form like grout or in a powder form for a deep mixing. Particulate grout is a mixture of water and one or several particulate materials. Particulate materials which are cement, flyers, clay, or sand. So these are the grouting materials. If we are going to dissolve these materials into water, it will be suspense, it will be called as suspension grouts because suspension grouts means in the form of a particles, the grouts will be available. Right? That means if you are going to dissolve the, the cement flyers or clay, whatever the this uh, materials, it is, these are the called a grouting materials, which you are going to dissolve in the water, it will be remain in suspension form. That's why it is also called as a particulate grout, right? So the first one is suspension grout. Slag and fly ash have sometimes been used as well. Slag and fly ash. So these materials has also been used as a suspension grout or these grouting materials comes under the suspension groups because once it is dissolved in water it remains in the form of a particulate or fine particles next we can see solution grout solution grout means whenever you are going to dissolve the grouting materials it will be dissolved it will not be in suspension form it will not be in the particular form. It will fully dissolve. That's why it is. It says that chemical grouts fall under the category of solution grout. Chemical grouts we can consider. Chemical grout is defined as any grouting material characterized by being a pure solution. That means no particles in suspension. So solution means it will be completely in the solution form. We can see the grout, uh, grout, right? Once grout, grouting material dissolved in this, uh, uh, dissolved, it will not be visible. That's why 
it is called as solution route. It will be in the form of a solution, right? So in practice, suspended solids are often added to chemical grounds to modify the solution property as additives. Sometimes it is used, suspended solids is used as additives in chemical grounds to enhance the properties. The types of chemical grouting materials have been classified as sodium silicate. These are the grouting materials, sodium silicate, acrylics, lignose sulfides, lignose sulfonates, phenoplast, aminoplast, and other materials. So these are the grouting materials. Once it is dissolved, it will be in the form of a solution. That's why it is called as solution grouts. Next, we can uh, continue the solution grout. The major difference between particulate grouts and the chemical grouts, that is the solution grout, in the, is in the penetrability. Penetrability, right? So chemical grouts can penetrate into soil with a fine particles. The fine particles, the clay particles. So in that case, we can go for the grouting using the solution grouts or chemical grouts. The penetrability for chemical grout is a function of solution viscosity, whereas the penetrability for particulate grout is a function of particle size. Chemical grouting is done using one sort system or two sort system. What does it mean? What do you mean by one sort and two sort? In one sort system, where all the chemicals are injected together, together after pre injection what, what in case of one sort, what normally it is done? All the chemicals are mixed together, and at a time, it is injected for uh, in the log or the soil for grouting purpose. That means pre mixing is carried out. Whereas in case of two sort system, one chemical is injected first, right? Followed by injection of a second chemical, which reacts with the first to produce a gel, which subsequently hardens. So in two sort system, what we have to do? First, we have to inject the first uh, chemical, right? And then we have to put the second chemicals, right? Whereas in case of one sort, all these, these uh, chemicals are going to mix together and then we have to inject it. Here, first sort, the first chemical we have to inject, then another chemical we have to inject for the grouting. So two sort systems are slower and require higher injection pressure and more closely spaced grout holes. What he says that two sort systems are slower and require higher injection pressure. Why? Because one sort may create the hindrance, right? So in, in, in case of one sort, because you are going to put one sort and then second sort, right? So it, 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 it will take time. Once you are going to mix together, in case of a one sort system, there will not be any problem. Because in all one sort system, you are going to mix all the chemicals together. So two, system, two sort systems are slower and require higher injection pressures because it is mixed together. That means one two sort means First sort you are going to place, inject, then you are going for the second sort. That's why high pressure required because already one sort is there. That's why pressure in second sort, pressure, is, pressure requirement is more. Okay. Although chemical grouting cost high, it has several advantages like absence of particulate materials because it is a solution grout, low viscosity and control over setting time. So this is the advantages, right, though it is costly. Next we can see emulsion grout. This, it is a two-phase system. Emulsion grouts, as we know, two types of uh, the uh, okay, chemicals are going to mix together, or two types of materials. Two, for example, bitumen and water. You can see here emulsion, a two-phase system containing minute collider droplets of liquid in a dispersed phase. Example, bitumen water. Also in the category are foams. 
forms also comes under the emulsion grout category created by emulsifying a gas into the grout materials which could be cement or organic chemicals so residues of wire refinery industry are processed in any emulsifying plant to produce nearly circular droplets of asphalt suspended in water so by choosing the proper emulsifying agent one can obtain negatively charged at anionic asphalt globules for maximum flow and penetration or positively charged cationic asphalt globules to attest a negatively charged clay soils so both this both the negatively charged or positively charged can be produced so further both anionic and cationic types of rapid so anionic and cationic negatively or positively charged further it is classified in rapid medium or slow setting globules can 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 be also manufactured okay these global uh, globular spheres of global spheres are 1 to 2 micro in diameter along with water can be used as a ground to fill soil voids or rock fissures okay slow setting emulsions are generally recommended since they can travel the lower longest distance into the materials being ground slow setting because it can it take lots of time more time it can take so it can go up to the deeper depth so that's why slow setting emulsion is suggested now we can see the next part so what we discussed in the previous slides what are the different types of grouting materials first one is suspension grouts that means the grouting materials which remain in suspension once it dissolves in water and second is the chemical grout which is also called as solution grout and third is the emulsion grout now we can see the types of grouting categories of grouting what are the various categories of grouting so five categories uh, are there first is called as permeation grouting that mean that means once you are going for grouting types of grouting means once you are going for great different ways of grouting has been classified in five categories so first one is called as penetration grouting and second is compaction grouting third is hydrofracture grouting fourth is compensation grouting and fifth is jet grouting so one by one we shall discuss the first we shall go for penetration permeation grouting see permeation grouting comes under the penetration or we have to remember here that permeation flow in existing pores that means the grout has to has to be injected in the voids of the soil okay so flow in existing pores the pores are not going to be disturbed so in this grouting thin grout is injected into the soil deposit so that it permeates into the voids of the soil right so permeation grouting what we are going to do here we are going to make the soil impermeable so see here in this method the formation of soil and rock will not be disturbed whatever the formation of soil is there that is not going only we are going to put the or inject the grouting materials in the voids okay this technique that's why it is called, it is it says here the formation or structure is not going to be disturbed the technique is to reduce soil permeability as i told you in case of permeation grouting we have to make this soil impermeable right that means we are going to reduce the permeability as well as to strengthen and stiffen the soil in this ground treatment method grout is injected into a porous medium without disturbing its original structures as i told you in the previous paragraphs structures are not going to be disturbed it refers to the process of filling the pores and joints in a soil or rock deposit to change its geotechnical properties almost any grout material 
may be used for permission grouting, but there are distinct limits on the grout mixed use for a specific types of soil or grout. What does it mean? In case of permission grouting, it says that any type of grouting material can be used, but it also depends upon the type of soil, whether it is cohesionless soil or cohesive soil. Okay. So permission grouting again we are continuing here. The grouting is suitable for cohesion in soil such as gravel and sand. What we said that the permission grouting includes cement slurry grouting or and chemical grouting. So these two that means suspension grouts as well as the solution grouts both can be used in case of permeation. The cement slurry grouting is more suitable for gravel while the chemical grouting is more suitable for the sand. After permeation grouting, the soil becomes impermeable. A strong and less compressible the strength is going to be improved. This method is commonly used to stabilize soils before starting excavation or tunneling operations so that we can make the soil stable. Once it will be stable, then we can go for the excavation. We can go for the construction. Construction means excavation of soil. Right? So tunneling or the excavation. Before, before, uh, means before excavation, we have to go for the ground. So what are the processes adopt for permission ground? That means we just discussed in the previous slides about the permeation grouting, but once we have to go for grouting, permeation grouting, what steps we have to follow? That we have to know here. So first what we have to do, prepare grout in batch before grouting, right? In a batch form, you have to prepare the grout, grout, grouting, grouting, or what we have to do, form grout by, that means prepare grout by supplying grout components for several tanks during grout. So in different types tanks also we can have grouting materials, right? Or the grouting components and then we can use for the grouting purpose. So next step, what we have to do? In the first steps, we have to prepare the grout. Second steps, drill a hole in a soil to a desired depth, right? To form a grouted bulb, insert an injected injection pipe, pump the grout into the pipe and pressure it out from the bottom of the pipe. We can also see the figures here. We shall, I will explain the figure. To form a grouted wall, place a sleeve port pipe, a steel or PVC pipe with holes or ports in intervals. Holes or ports in intervals in PVC pipe. First Slip port pipe, first put the, or place this slip port pipe first and then insert an injection pipe with two packers. Inside the slip port pipe, pump crowd and force it to exit from one port at a time in the desired direction. Let us see this figure. So see the borehole wall. So this, uh, you can see the, the, the borehole wall is there. So in the borehole wall, that means one, we have to make a borehole. And in the borehole, what we have to do, we have to put the, we have to place a sleep port pipe. We have to put a sleep port, sleep port pipe, okay, which will have holes or ports at different intervals in the sleep hole pipe, okay. After that, we shall, inside the sleep port pipe, we shall place or we shall put the injection pipe, which will have two packers. You can see this packer and this packer. This is the, 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 the drill hole. The outside uh, hole is the drill hole. Inside the drill hole, we have first placed the slip port pipe. And that slip port pipe have, will, will have ports or the holes at different intervals, right? In the slip port pipes, we have to put the injection pipe. This injection pipe will have two slip, okay, two packers, two pa sorry, two packers. So this packer will close on the upside and down, downside, and the pressure grout materials will be sent 
with the pressures and uh, opening is there in this uh, slip pipeline. So here you can see the injection or the grouting will take place in case of permission. So three things are there. Make a drill hole, then put a uh, slip board pipe which have different, uh, which have holes at different uh, height or different interval. Inside the slip board pipe, we shall put the injection pipe along with the two packers. And this will be jammed. This will be uh, closed here. Here also be, will be closed by the packers. And then by pressure, we shall send the, the we shall go for the grout, right? So next we can see after the preset grout pressure or volume is raised, raise or lower the injection pipe to the next interval depending upon the installation. Down stage or up stage. Down stage means from from uh, top to bottom or up stage means from bottom to top. So we can raise the pipeline. Uh, pipe uh, injection pipe either we can raise or lower depending upon the requirement okay and this this will be un method until the whole required zone is grouted so suppose you want to go for grouting from bottom to top or top to bottom accordingly we have to raise the this uh, uh, pipe system that is the slip board pipe or the injection pipe. Now we can see next uh, grouting type of grouting is compression grout, which is also called as displacement grout. This grouting is also called as displacement grouting. It improves ground conditions by displacement. In compression grouting, the grout is not designed to penetrate the soil parts, it displaces them. Remember, in case of permission grouting, what we have to do, we have to inject the grouting materials or we have to do the grouting in the voids, okay? But here, we have to go for displacement. Printed, that's why it printed, uh, not designed to penetrate the soil voids. It displaces them. In this grouting, a very steep mortar, very steep, with a slump of 25 mm having low mobility is injected into two good soil. Okay? Forming grout bulbs. You can see the forming grout It is injected. These are the grout bulbs. Okay? Which displaces and densifies the surrounding ground without penetrating the soil pores or soil bulbs. So it displaces. Right? Compression grout is also called a displacer. It displaces this soil. Horizontal displacement is going to take place. And we are going to use this steep motor having low mobility with high pressures. It is, is to restore the structure which have suffered excessive settlement. See, compaction grout also comes under the underpinning. Okay, so suppose this uh, this is the structure, this is the foundation, and if we suppose the foundation is going down, in that case, we can go for the compaction grout to support this structure. It is mostly used for sand, but sometimes also used for silt and clay if dissipation of excess poor water pressure is permitted. This important thing is there. Mostly it is used for the sand. It displaces, right? Displacement, by displacement only the grouting is going to take place. But suppose silt and clay is there. But uh, through the silt and clay, pore water pressure is going to be released easily. In that case, this method can also be utilized. Compression grouting can also be utilized. Now we can see how we can uh, carry out uh, this uh, compression grouting in the field. What are the methods? What process we can adopt? So let us see. Compression grouting is always done in the stages, which can start from the top down. Top down means top to bottom. That is called a down stage. And from the bottom up, bottom to up, that is up stage as shown in the figure. So we shall discuss the up stage grouting. This day we shall talk about this figure. Okay, up stage compaction. First we shall make a drill hole as desired depth. Up to desired depth we can make a hole. 
placing a casing to the bottom of the hole. We shall place the casing at the bottom of the hole, right? Then injecting the ground grout until a refusal is reached. See, refusal word is here very important. Refusal means we have to put the grouting materials or we have to do the grouting till the grout heap, limited grout heap, till the preset maximum pumping pressure. What was the pressure, pumping pressure we have decided? Till that it has achieved or it, it has acquired or predetermined amount of grout. Or we can also say in case of refusal, whatever the amount of grout we have to place for a compression grout, we have already decided the amount of grout which we have decided and that amount has been used for the grouting. Then it is called a refusal. Okay. That means beyond that it is not going to take. The, the, the grouting metal is not going to be taken by the soil. So that is called a refusal. So here refusal has been uh, defined in three ways. Raising and casing, raising the casing at preset interval for each stage. So from bottom to top, we have to go at different stages. We have to go for the grout. Resuming the injection of grout until reaching the refusal. We have to, unless refusal is not there, that means unless complete grouting is not going to take place for a particular zone. Okay. Till then, we have to continue. That's why that is called a refusal. That means the whole area has been grouted. More than that, it is not going to take the grouting materials. Repeating the above steps until reaching the top zone. So we, uh, we shall uh, stepwise or stage-wise, we shall move upward till the final completion of the grouting. Now we can see down stage grouting. This is the, this figure. What you say then? There's some, we have to move from top to bottom for the grouting. And we remember that compression grouting is the displacement grouting. In this case, what we have to do? Drill a large hole, typically 75 millimeter in diameter, to the top of the zone to the density file. Okay? At least 1.5, 1.2 meter below the ground surface. 1.2 meter below the ground surface. Insert a casing, then we have to insert a casing to 50 millimeter diameter, inner diameter, into the hole and fill the annular space outside the casing with rapid setting ground. Annular space means what? The, the spacing in between the, the whole wall, large hole wall, and outside the casing wall. So, in between, we have to, in between uh, the area, that area is uh, called as the annular space. Okay. Drill through the casing and uh, deepen the hole in order of approximately 1 to 2 meter as the stage length for the first stage. Okay. Inject grout until reaching the refusal pressure. Refusal means we can say that the complete grouting has taken place. After the previous injected grout is set, First, suppose it is safe. Repeat the above steps until reaching the bottom of the zone to be injected. So, stepwise, we shall do the grouting from top to bottom. This is called a down stage compression. Okay. Now we can see the third one is called as hydrofracture grouting. It is also called as intrusion or a splitting grouting. In this case, what we normally need to do. A stiff grout is injected with high pressures up to 4 megapascal to fracture the soil mass and force the grout into the fractures. What it says that high pressure will go, fracturing of the rock will take place, and then in the fracture zone, the grouting materials will be inserted or injected. The hydrofracture grouting is suitable for sand, silt and clay and often used for compressors and grouting purposes. This, this uh, grouting can also be used for the 
compensation means uh, where some uh, suppose holy here okay some uh, vacant place has occurred so in that case we have to go for the hydrofracking grouting next is the compensation grouting compensation grouting is designed to protect existing structure from potential damage right as a result of ground movement or grout loss as i told you that suppose below the foundation some vacant place has occurred in that case we have to go for the compensation grouting so ground movement of ground loss from adjacent or on ground excavation it is general concept that the sufficient volume of grout is injected to the ground around uh, or below the existing structure to ensure the structure remain at their existing level so sufficient we have to see the name itself says compensation grout whatever the losses whatever the the hole has been formed due to the certain regions that hole we have to fill it which is called as compensation right that's why it says that remain at their existing level why excavation takes place below or nearby it is typically conducted prior to as well as during the excavation to compensate for the change in the stresses ground loss before they influence the structure compression of grouting is alteration of alternate alternating use of compaction permeation or hydro pressure it is alternative compression in place of compaction permeation or hydro pressure we can go for the compression grouting the operation of compression grouting is always controlled by observation methods that means whenever you are going for the compensation in that case always we have to go for the monitoring monitoring means whether the whole vacant space whole area which has been uh, disturbed by some regions that's your underground excavation or any subsidence in that case we have to go for the compensation and we have to monitor it that uh, the whole area has been compensated uh, uh, or not that means the, uh, the whole uh, area has been carried out compensation grouting or not that also we have to see now we shall see here next is the jet grouting which is called as partial replacement or mixing place jet grouting involves the erosion of the soil by cement grout jet of waters or in compressed air and a mixture of grout with the soil to form a grouted columns or walls what we can say in case of jet this also comes under the underpinning so jet grouting we are we can say that the replacement or the mixing it is the mixing it is the the the, the grout is going to mix with the soil and then it is going to form a columns or a wall to support the structure you can see the how this the jet grouting is carried out and it is going to support the footing so this figure also is saying that how the grouting is carried out the grout pipe with jets may be self drilled or inserted into pre drilled both things can be considered either self drilling using the grout grouting pipe or already pre pre uh, drilled hole can also be utilized for jet grouting the jet grouting fluids are pumped at high pressure while the pipe is withdrawn with rotation for columns meaning suppose you are want to form a column below the footing in that case we have to withdraw the the pipe by rotation methods it is written here with the pipe is withdrawn right for a columns without rotation for the walls so in by rotating in case of column by rotating we have to come out in the upward direction jet grouting can be considered a type uh, type of swale mixing as i said mixing and then forming the column like materials the support we can see it is going to provide support the jets hydrically sear the swale and blend cement grout blend means mixing or a suitable binder to form a swale cement column swale cement column. it is going to work as an appeal support the jet grouting method is suitable for all kinds of soil 
So we can see here, there are four basic jet grouting systems. That means jet grouting uh, can be carried out in four ways, right? Uh, first one is a single phase. That means only grout, uh, grouting can be injected to, and it will mix with this one and to form a column or a wall. Second is the dual phase. You can see this figure. Grout plus air injection, both we can use for the grouting. Third, triple phase, water plus air injection, followed by grout injection. So water plus air, both we can use here. So triple, uh, uh, this, this is also the way of a jet grouting, right? Jet grouting can be done. Another is called a super jet grout, air injection plus drilling fluid, right? We can use. So these are the way of uh, jet grouting which anyone we can follow in the field. So now we can see here the process adopted for jet grouting. Whenever we are going for jet grouting in the field, what stage, what steps we have to follow? Let us see the procedure for jet grouting operation typically, typically includes the following steps. It has also been shown in the figure. Position the drill machine at a desired location. This is the first figure A. Drill into the ground, drill into the ground to the desired depth. Up to what at what depth we have to go for the grouting? We have to also make it hole. We have to make a drill hole. The tolerance of the drilling location should be less than 50 millimeters. The tolerance limit is the tolerance limit we have to maintain be less than 50 millimeters. Insert the jet grouting pipe. Insert the jet. This is C you can see here. Insert the jet grouting pipe to the pre drilled ground hole. This is a ground hole. In, in this uh, uh, hole, we have to go start jet grouting. Some machine install the jet grouting pipe directly with an auger at the tip. What does it mean? Sometimes, uh, in some machines, what normally it happens? Install the jet grouting pipe directly with the auger at the tip. At the tip itself, it is connected and the grouting uh, begins. Sometimes it also happens like this. So we can see the fourth step. Once the pipe reaches the desired depth, start the jet grouting process by withdrawing the pipe and injecting grout until the desired elevation. So you can see the first positioning, B the drilling, Second is the jet grouting by withdrawing. Withdraw, we can withdraw by rotations, and grouting is also carried out parallelly. And this is the fourth one will be complete. That's the fourth step. So, what you say that the operation should follow the specification for injection pressure, injection rate, injection time, pipe withdrawal rate, pipe rotation rate. So, this should be completely followed. So of the operation should follow the specification. Whenever we are operating the jet or we are going to carry out the jet grouting, all these points should be followed. The specification should be followed. Pressure, rate, timing, pipe withdrawal rate. We are going to withdraw by rotation on in the upward direction. Okay, so everything we have to go by a specification. Then clean up the injection pipe and other associated tools. Okay, we come we, once we have completed the grouting at one location, then we shall start uh, jet grouting at other location. So this is the, uh, all about the today lecture. So what we discussed first, what are the various types of grouting materials? And what are the types of grouting which are normally followed in the field? So we shall stop here and tomorrow we shall discuss about the next lecture.